Well, the simplest way to put it is that scientists had an idea to make crops more resilient to external factors. So let's say you grow tomatoes, and at night it gets so cold that by morning half your tomatoes are frozen, and now you can't sell them anymore. This is what scientists were able to change their genetic modification. They figured out a way to take DNA from one organism and put it inside a completely different organism to create a desired and specific outcome. For example, let's go back to the tomato scenario. Scientists recognized that Arctic flounder, yes, that's the fish, could withstand extremely cold temperatures. They thought, what if we took the DNA trait that allows the flounder to withstand the cold and put it inside the tomato DNA so that the tomato could withstand the same temperatures? Now you've just narrowed your chances of your tomatoes becoming frozen. This idea that you could now get 100% crop yield was the original guiding principle for genetic modification. Our friends at Lilly Films have a documentary called The Future of Food by Deborah Coons Garcia that explains it best. Genetic engineering is really a radical revolution in food production. It's really a cell invasion technology. You know, people have heard they're taking a flounder gene and putting it in tomato so the tomato can last in, in cold temperatures. But people ask, how does that flounder gene get in that tomato? How does it get in there? And what really happens is the only way you can do it is to invade the cell of the tomato and deposit the flounder gene. Well, what's good at invading cells? Bacteria and viruses. After 12 years of searching, Monsanto found a soil bacteria that is naturally immune to Roundup herbicide. Their goal was to genetically engineer DNA from these bacteria into various plants. They cut out a sequence of DNA that is resistant to Roundup. But if this DNA sequence alone is inserted into a corn plant, it will have no effect. So the next step involves E. coli bacteria. Gaps are created in the E. coli DNA, and when the two test tubes are mixed together, some of the E. coli DNA recombines with the Roundup-resistant bacteria. Then the technicians smuggle the engineered DNA into the cells of the corn plant they want to modify. Cells will naturally reject foreign DNA, so they developed a method using soil bacteria that causes tumors in plants. They use this bacteria to ferry the engineered DNA into the plant's nucleus. There are also two other methods used to get the engineered DNA through the cell wall. One uses a stream of electricity to create tiny holes in the plant cells so they become vulnerable to infiltration by foreign DNA. Another is the gene gun, which blasts particles of gold coated with engineered DNA into the plant cells. Each of these three methods needs a promoter gene that turns on the desired characteristics. The promoter gene is often extracted from the cauliflower mosaic virus. This capacity of bacteria and viruses to invade ma mammals in different ways is what really has a lot of people edgy about biotechnology because that's, that's really what the tools are all about. In order to move genetic material from one organism to another that don't normally cross, you've got to sort of behave like bacteria and viruses and invade into the cells and become established just like the virus must become established. American Heritage Medical Dictionary defines genetically modified organisms as an organism whose genetic characteristics have been altered by the insertion of a modified gene or a gene from another organism using the techniques of genetic engineering. The hope was that this biotechnology would end world hunger by creating higher crop yields. Ironically, we have found studies that indicate just the opposite. Reports have shown that genetically modified crops actually produce fewer yields. In fact, in some countries where starvation rates are very high, there have been many cases of citizens burning genetically modified crops in protest. Like the Future of Food said, Monsanto, the largest biotech company in the world, was able to make seeds that resisted their own Roundup herbicide. This allows farmers to spray as much herbicide as they want without worrying about their crops dying. But it doesn't stop there. 
Scientists can now make seeds that produce their own pesticide. This is like you and me walking around with a mosquito repellent coming out of our pores. How do they do this? Scientists found a bacteria in the soil that is lethal to many species of insects called Bacillus thuringiensis, or BT for short, and they genetically engineered it into the crops. So what could the effects be when the bacteria that only used to live in our soil is now being distributed into the air through our crops? In the Philippines, the people living next to the genetically engineered cornfield developed reoccurring skin, respiratory, and intestinal problems. Blood tests were done on 39 of the Filipinos, and it was revealed that their immune system was affected by the BT toxin that the corn had released. And there's still more. Instead of just making drugs in labs, scientists have been growing crops that produce their pharmaceutical drugs, like research chemicals, blood proteins, antibodies, and vaccines, just to name a few. According to the Society of Diabetic Rights, thousands of diabetics have experienced bad reactions, and many have died as a result of this genetically engineered insulin called synthetic or human insulin. The Union of Concerned Scientists have been urging the United States Department of Agriculture to put a ban on pharma crops due to the potential that they could contaminate all of our food supplies.